I am on Patreon and Patreon is a platform where, where I will upload interesting videos where you can learn astrology and this is an exclusive Patreon only membership videos where you will get some interesting takes on Vedic astrology, some interesting learning on Vedic astrology and a lot more secrets will be shared there. Aries Ascendant Venus rules your 2nd and 7th house. When Venus is the lord of 2nd and 7th and it is placed in the 11th, it is going to be a very good transit for you. It's a transit that will give you a reality check for your family, for in your personal life. It will give you a reality check about your requirement, financial requirement. Especially if you are into business, if you are into contracts, this is going to be positive but then you will also have to understand your limitations. This is a Venus and Saturn conjunction and Venus is going to face the reality, face the truth in this Aquarius zodiac sign. On one side, the position of Venus with respect to 2nd and 7th Lord, 2nd and 7th house is actually positive. But on the other hand, Venus is rigged with Mars in Taurus, Ketu in Libra, Rahu in Bharani and Venus himself being with Saturn. So you can understand that how Venus is pressurized, which means this can create pressure in your marriage, in your family life, in your relations basically. So with Saturn, it is going to give you an understanding who is your true friend and who is only a friend by the face, by the face value. Also, you have to understand that this is going to reshape your expectations in life so don't expect that all your expectations will be fulfilled. Rather, this is the time frame when your expectations will be realigned. And once realigned, it will give you good ideas for growth. This will ensure that you have stab stability in your life. It will take care of your insecurities. And Venus, on the other hand, will also give you some comfort. So once you start accepting things, once you start adjusting to the situation of life, you will see that you will be comfortable in your life. It is therefore, if you see on a grand scale, if you see the transit in totality with respect to other planets, it's a positive transit. Just that in relations, you have to be very humble, very polite and understanding. And financially, you need to go for long-term planning. Overall, it's a good transit. Taurus Ascendant. Taurus is ruled by Venus. And Mars is placed on your first house, Rahu being in Bharani in the 12th house. This is already triggering the desire, especially with Saturn going out of Capricorn and moving into your 10th house, you would want to act on your desire. This will be a trigger in your mind that you would want to fulfill what you need. But the moment Venus enters the Saturn, zodiac sign of Aquarius, it will encounter Saturn, which is reality, the truth the balance, the justice. So this means that you need to fulfill the sixth house duties before you can expect your desire or before you can work for your desire or you can expect the fulfillment of your desire. Sixth house means your prarabdha, your duties. So it's like before buying something, you need to ensure that you're not too debt ridden. You are not completely under the debt. So it's like clear the credit card dues before you initiate another major expense. Complete your ongoing responsibilities before you do something for yourself. So this is the time of sacrifice, a selfless act, a time when uh, you will have to be a team leader. You will have to provide comfort to people around you and show humanitarian nature, show that compassionate nature. This is the time to spread love because it is going to be in the zodiac of Aquarius, the humanitarian zodiac and in the bhava of karma and when saturn and venus come together in the karmic bhava it totally means that you need to have that divine presence and chant devi mantra devi suktam shri suktam and start showing that humbleness that gratitude so the more you are thankful to what you already have venus will ensure that the problems will go, will go away this also means that saturn will make you work towards your duties so you might be slightly uncomfortable uh, because of certain duties or responsibilities that will that will be literally thrown at you. 
but in the end you will have to do what you have to do if you if you follow that path and if you are disciplined enough venus will bring relief in your career in your reputation you can work for your reputation and especially people for whom image for whom publicity is more important influencers politicians journalists people who are involved in healthcare industry salon industry textile industry beauty industry will see good boost but you will have to be very practical so don't overload overburden with your work work and also try to bring comfort at your workplace it's a con confluence of hard work and comfort gemini ascendant for gemini venus rules 12th house and 5th house and this venus goes in the 9th house what a beautiful transit it's a bhavat bhavam for the 5th house because 5th lord gets goes 5th from itself this position of venus will give you good luck luck will favor you and you will see that your life will now start showing positive results venus and saturn is practical understanding so it will give you that practical teaching you will understand the role of maya in your life whatever resource you have whatever people you are connected with will give you some practical understanding about your own life it's like whatever you have you will get to know how to use it in fact the resource management and the time management will be best done during this time this will also initiate some leisure trips this will also initiate some you know unplanned backpacking kind of thing good for you it's a time of enjoyment between all the enjoyment you need to take care of your expenses because venus also rules your 12th house this is also the time when people looking to travel for education for job for career will see some positive sign or maybe some issue if you are in will be resolved or see, will see some sign of progress it is a positive transit when the 9th lord and 5th lord are together it's an exceptional transit and especially towards the end when mercury will also enter capricorn which is basically uh, going to be your 8th house this is going to give you that sudden boost in life this is going to give you that sudden growth because your focus will now be addressing the inevitable addressing the uncertainty of life and with 9th lord and 5th lord coming together that creates that platform on which you can easily walk you can say for gemini the bad days are over saturn and venus will come together to give you relief but on the other hand you will have to initiate some spiritual journey learn kriya yoga learn hatha yoga or any form of yoga which will give you health improvement holistic lifestyle and lifestyle management has to be done otherwise you will see that uh, the ninth house energies will start interfering one of the bigger reason will be that saturn is aspecting your 6th house but overall it's a very positive and a luck favoring transit but that does not mean that you will test your luck you should focus on karma and you will get the proper result cancer ascendant in case of cancer ascendant venus rules your 11th and 4th house two very important house one that defines your happiness one that talks about assets properties other talks about your income your gains your profits that venus goes in the 8th house so this is the time to invest your time your comfort your gains in some area which can give you future growth and future result so this venus and saturn is not going to give you any immediate output it is something where you are going to invest so you might get an opportunity which may give you a vision for the future and you have to work for that vision that vision will be created during this time it's a very good time to build assets it's a good time to build properties think about investments it can be in stock it can be uh, in real estate it can be anywhere it has just it, that it has to be very safe investment also try to observe that ketu is in the 4th house and rahu is in the 10th so it will also talk about a sudden shift a sudden change in your career maybe your role will change yes the environment may not be that friendly but this is the time where you will have to hit the bullseye 
all you have to do is have, create a determined effort and be happy with what you're doing. Just enjoy the flow process, enjoy the workflow. And in the meanwhile, and in the meantime, take care of your health. Remember, eighth house can bring unexpected outcomes and unexpected situation. So take care of your health, do yoga, do pranayam, and chant Shani Bij Mantra. Or simply chant Nilanjanam Samabhasam, Ravi Putram Yamagrajam, Chaya Martanda Sambhutam, Tam Namami Shanashanam. This mantra every day 108 times. And ask Saturn to guide you. And people who are stuck completely and who wants to fight the battle, fight the war in which you are in, then you chant Mahishasur Mardini Stotra. Ask the Divine Goddess Ma Parvati to help you on your cause. Overall, it is going to give you slightly mixed results. Don't be surprised, especially in relations. Uh, but a lot of secrets will come out. Leo Ascendant. In case of Leo Ascendant, Venus rules your 10th house and Venus rules your 3rd house. Both are karmic houses. Both are the houses of hard work. Both are the houses of courage and initiative and also it is the, uh, you, you can say a king not only has to work hard but his action has to be glorified. And now you understand how uh, Venus plays a vital role in glorifying the action and victories of the king because Venus rules the karmic zodiac sign. A king is Rajasic and Venus ensures that Leo becomes a Rajasic zodiac sign. And if that Venus comes in 7th house along with Saturn, it's an excellent position. It's a position where your dreams will be fulfilled. People will show their true colors and you will understand who is your true friend. And then you can start associating with those people. You will automatically see that you will gain few friends, you will lose few people, not only in the friend circle, but also in a general sense. It's a good time to resolve issues with your spouse, with your business partner. It is a good time to think more on the perspective of, of what you can make out uh, of your expectations. Like you have expectations, everybody has. But then this is the time to discuss with your spouse, with your family members. Also, look if your expectations can be fulfilled practically in the environment you are in. There should always be a room of growth, but do not have impractical expectations. And that will give you an idea. This Venus will give you an idea because this Venus is going to aspect the Ascendant. You are also going to get some critical feedback about your personality, about your nature. And if you are accepting that feedback in a constructive sense if you are sportingly accepting that feedback and then working towards that then you are doing the right thing but if you try to fight it out if you try to prove a point unnecessarily then you will commit a mistake reaction to an insult will bring losses do not give a knee-jerk reaction if you have to respond respond but that response should be polite should be humble backed by data go by the book and don't create any unnecessary innovation or don't try to you know create something out of thin air rather follow the protocol following the protocol is going to bring you exceptional results venus in seventh and saturn in seventh is really really strong position and you can say this is the initiation of a king makers transit a transit that can give you maximum. Now it totally depends up to you how you can absorb, how much you can extract from this position of the planet. But overall, it's a positive time, be it health, be it wealth, be it the circumstance. A good thing is that it you might feel isolated. So go and spend some time with yourself. Go at a place where you can spend like near the river, on a mountain. You can go on a leisure trip. You can be inside your room and meditate. But sometime, like an hour in a day, should be yours, totally yours. And by that, you will be able to understand yourself much better and you will be able to create a new future. This is Venus and Saturn's message for you. Virgo Ascendant. For Virgo, Venus is a very important planet. It rules your ninth and second house. It rules your destiny, your knowledge, 
it rules the divine presence higher thinking research mind the base of life and all the financial angles of the second house and now this venus is going to go in the sixth house so this is where disputes may come when you will try to you know spend more money when you would want to travel so always there will be an extra expense or some hurdle or obstacle or maybe a a bad event that can create a financial loss say for example you book a ticket and something suddenly something comes up and you can't go and now you can't also get the refund somehow that money is lost it will be minor small expenses that will be like a reminder that first cut down the debt first focus on the prarabdha and happily do it because venus is all about happiness when saturn is in the 6th house it's a very good placement for virgo ascendant please watch my saturn transit in uh, aquarius analysis for virgo ascendant it's there in my channel when venus joins this saturn it brings the happiness and joy also which means to do your duty to execute responsibilities you might have to travel you might have to spend money this is the time where you should spend the money you should involve yourself in solving the disputes and you should happily do it even if you don't actually get anything out of it because remember there is no such transaction in this realm that goes without a return if there is no return means you were the one who are supposed to pay back so this is the time to pay back good time to cut down on your debts good time to focus on your health especially if you are suffering from thyroid issue if you are suffering from any hormone related issue this is the time when you can meditate because saturn venus in 6th means somebody who is helping the animals somebody who is focusing on the disputes somebody who is focusing on the health going holistic focusing on essential oils focusing on therapies and focusing on meditation going internal and keeping your internal happy rather than the external outward expression so yoga meditation silence reading books paying off the debt all these things if you approach with a holistic angle you will see that it will bring you peace it will give you mental satisfaction and this will be the transit that will lay out the foundation for the entire saturn transit in aquarius rather it will give you a much needed mental relief before you actually gear up to execute your responsibility it is like a cherry on top so this venus transit in 6th house is going to be good but but from the perspective of personal relations from the perspective of comfort it is going to be slightly difficult because in 6th house venus finds it very difficult to cope up especially with saturn uh, you might find yourself in adverse situation in uncomfortable scenarios maybe there will be slight health issues that will keep you on that discomfort the best way that is why i'm saying is focusing on detoxification focusing more on health and focusing on clearing off the load from your head so that you reduce the discomfort as much as possible but when you will try to look for growth if you will try to look for you know success rapid fast movement then there will be problem if you are going to travel if you are if you are going to a foreign country if you are going for a education related or you are spending money on some some area of your life ensure that you can properly justify the expense otherwise hold off for a couple of weeks see how the things are and then design your future accordingly it is the time when patience is going to be the key hard work is going to be the key and if you if you are ready to serve the society serve your country you will see that ultimately you will understand the true value of venus saturn in 6th house just that don't put your money in any gambling stock uh, avoid eating non vegetarian food during this time and reduce the tamasic element in your body chanting uh saying aham brahmasmi doing the prana mudra and doing proper yoga is going to help you in the long run 
Libra ascendant. For you, the ascendant is ruled by Venus. So is the eighth house. It's about life and death. It's about your existence. Venus is that crucial for you. This Venus will be with Saturn in your fifth house. Fifth house is about education, knowledge. It's about expression. So you will see on one hand, you will see a suppression of expression. On the other hand, you will also be on the side of justice and truth. You will learn a lot about your life. You will learn a lot about yourself. And the truth that you will hear, if you are accommodating that in your life, you will get to know the real benefits what this Venus and Saturn can give you. Best way to handle this transit is to read Bhagavad Gita every day. Not only just read it, but try to incorporate those events, those messages in your real life, in your day-to-day -day life. It's not just a, a, a book reading. It, it's not just a divine satsang, but it is where you are learning from a war, from a battlefield. See, the message of Bhagavad Gita was like a comforting message among all the deaths and all the war that's happening. It's like a Saturn and Venus kind of thing. Although the message is Jupiterian, still, Saturn and Venus together in the fifth house can give you a, a knowledge that is not so comforting. You may hear some messages or you may end up speaking the truth even when you don't want to. So this is a war, this is a fight that will transform your life. You have to fight for a cause. You have to be there for poor and people who can't afford, people who are underprivileged. See what you can do, especially towards kids, towards students. The donation that you will give towards the education of uh, underprivileged children will go a long way in building a, a nature, building a, you can say, a foundation in your own soul. This is the time for soul realignment. This is also the time very good for students, very good for people who want to start something in the creative field. Handicrafts, someone who wants to open a wellness center, salon, someone who wants to do photography, someone who wants to do event management. See, Venus and Saturn is like you are beautifying the architecture, Shilpakala, Vastu. So all that comes under the domain of creation, destruction, and then further creation. So both will go hand in hand. So a portion of you will be destroyed and then a portion of you will be created. So it's a lot of unlearning and relearning for you. Take this transit and every message, every day will be a classroom session in your life. Positive classroom session. Learn, does not matter what age you are in. If you can learn, you will get to know more and more knowledge, more and more substance will come in your life. And remember, this is not just one lifetime. It's multiple lifetimes. Soul is, you can say, indestructible. So when Saturn and Venus comes together, don't think from the mortal level, think from the divine level. Scorpio Zodiac. For Scorpio Ascendant, Venus rules your 7th and 12th house. So it is going to impact import and export transaction, business, trade deals, travel and tourism. It can bring more expenses, especially expenses related to real estate, home renovation, furniture, buying more assets or even marriage or marriage related expenses. Here you will have to understand that you may have to let go one of your behavior, desire, or attitude to stabilize your business or stabilize your marriage. This is something where in order to gain comfort uh, in, in marital life or with, with your dealings, with your corporate dealings, you will have to, you know, trade off with some of your desire and expectations and be grounded and accept situation as it is. If you will try to fight this situation, it will not work. See, Mars, which is your Ascendant Lord, is also in your 7th house. Therefore, importance of the life partner becomes very crucial here. But what about those 
who don't have a life partner who are unmarried or divorced well for you the surroundings the feedback that you get from the environment will be very crucial you will have this outward expression whether you like or not and uh, you may see that you will be required your presence will be required in the life of people that you love you admire or maybe there can be people who need your help you just be there for them you be available for them and that will bring the saturn and venus energy into balance you might feel sad or depressed you might regret a past decision so it is always better to let go past should be in the past dump it in the past whatever you got to learn learn and then forget this is the time to move on and see the positive side of life move in the forward positive direction uh people who are trying to sell off their properties uh, to pay off their debts they will see a good time during this this period of venus saturn in the in the fourth house and venus being the lord of the 12th house coming in the fourth house money will come by selling off your assets and if uh, if there is a lot of debt on your head then this can bring some relief chant angarak stotra shani beej mantra and shukra beej mantra in case you have a malefic saturn a malefic venus or if you have lot of debt on your head sagittarius ascendant for sagittarius ascendant venus rules 6th and 11th house so it is the ruler of 50% of what you call as upachya house the house is responsible for for running your daily expense and need the daily grind is seen from these houses and when venus goes in your third house it means that you will have to take bold initiatives and you will have to rediscover your boundaries remap your abilities and maybe take bold and broader initiatives long term initiatives towards your career so you may start something new during this time it calls for greater responsibility it calls for taking more and more responsibility and while you are communicating in your work area you will have to be very diplomatic otherwise it can create unnecessary disputes this is the time when you can work towards your dream you can work towards your goal because third house is the house of initiative and courage laziness and procrastination delay of everything is going to be the biggest hurdle so you will have to be on top of everything and you will have to be very proactive you will have to bring in all the energy and every ounce of energy must be poured in to the task that you have decided to to complete or the goal that you have decided to fulfill it is a time where uh, your relation with your siblings can go bad you will have to be very polite and caring and you will have to uh, by yourself become accommodating adjusting and uh, don't say anything that can hurt someone's feeling and don't demean anyone this is the time where silence is going to be the great silence will bring the maximum comfort avoid taking unnecessary loans avoid uh, building assets thinking that building asset by loan is going to be a fruitful scenario be careful when you are handling disputes especially any court cases but otherwise in general on a very mundane level on a very simpler level this is going to be a transit of initiatives creative pursuits learning some creative art especially writing poems drawing photography video all this will give you some good good traction and good positive vibration that will make you happy you have to build a hobby and work towards that hobby so that you have something to do in your free time because you can't keep yourself free when venus and saturn are in the third house capricorn ascendant venus rules your 5th and 10th house 5th house is basically your expression your productivity and 5th house is also about your children so if you are a parent you will have to be very responsible on how you speak with your kids being too harsh being too straight forward is not going to work out it has to be a mixture of strictness and also some comfort because venus will be with saturn in your second house on the other hand it is going to be exceptionally good from your career perspective it is going to be good because 
you will speak the truth you will stand for the truth and you will stand for the justice it is also going to make you work towards your finances especially financial stability it is it will allow you to speak up for yourself and maybe if you deserve a promotion if you deserve a good share in your career you will speak up and that words those words will result into karmic actions the re the reaction will be positive to a certain extent a second house also talks about your personal sphere so with saturn and venus whenever emotions are involved you have to be very grounded you will have to be very polite and you will have to you know try to communicate in a practical yet comfortable manner don't be too cold or too harsh otherwise it will start creating problems uh in your in your in your relations in your home in your family circle hard work is important you will see and feel that you will have to involve more time in order to generate wealth maybe you will get new opportunities that will give you new areas of growth that will give you more financial benefits but you cannot trade off your family time you cannot trade off your family to get the money that is the message of saturn and venus in the second house you will have to strike that balance and that balance has to become has to come from within you and you will have to speak up like if you are getting over the top work and you cannot handle it and you know that it will take away your family time maybe you will have to speak up and you will have to say no that balancing is needed for capricorn and this is the first message of saturn once it has moved out of your ascendant it is your ascendant lord so it tells you that focus on your own values on your own roots and people who trust you and who stood for you more than you think about yourself and when you will do that your career will improve your productivity will improve people involved in food industry will see positive growth dentists will see good growth during this time uh if you if you can consume less food it will be great you can cut down your calories during this time and maybe join a gym doing pranayam and doing yoga fasting on a saturday if you are healthy is going to be some of the right ways of managing this saturn and venus energies it is a life changing transit for you so use this energy wisely and use it for for not only your growth but for the overall growth of your family members just to ensure that your words can create war or rift or coldness among two members of the family it can be between two friends also maybe it is because of the environment of your home don't let that happen be responsible aquarius ascendant venus rules your 4th and 9th house and this venus goes in your 1st house it is an exceptionally positive time when the 1st lord and 9th lord are together on your ascendant it talks about your personal growth it talks about you being more and more comfortable with your existence this is the time when you can accept few things in your life so if acceptance was not coming your way now it will come it will also make you feel good about yourself but then you have to accept the reality see saturn and venus is not a young combination it's a combination where you you know you age gracefully that grace has to come and if that if you allow that grace to come you will see that not only you will become accepting but you will also broaden your mindset this will also give you an idea how to manage things at your home time management skill management will be a part of this transit if you are into any labor intensive business you will see positive growth if you think about them and if you can manage by being an example so this is the time when you will have to lead by example and your action will speak louder than what you will say karma and dharma now comes together and this is the time when you have to show the spiritual side of you doing yoga thinking about your physical self thinking about your body looking for your ambitions goal setting basically you have to plan your personal goals and life for 2023 during this period and your luck will favor you guidance will come and you will see that your home and your family 
might also support you for your cause, whatever you want to do. So it's a very comfortable yet hard working time. It's a time when you find comfort in the uneasiness that you go through, which is natural. Saturn is coming in the first house. Immediately, it will not give you comfort because Saturn is going to stabilize things slowly. Venus is only a reality check. It will be good if you can pray to Ma Durga, Ma Parvati. If you can chant Shukra Bij Mantra, Venus Bij Mantra during this time. And if you can help the poor, if you're physically present to help somebody, that means your ascendant is there. And that way you can manage Saturn and Venus energies in a very positive way. It is a transit that can change your destiny. Just ensure that both of Saturn and Venus are expecting the seventh house, which means the practicality will translate and hit the marriage and the business. So you will have to be practical yet comforting, but not too cold. If you manage all those, you will see this will improve health, wealth, and then it will provide you an overall growth. So it's a very good time for Aquarius. Pisces Ascendant. For Pisces, Venus rules your third house and eighth house. So it's a very unique uh, rulership. It rules your longevity and it rules your efforts. It also rules your uncertainty. Then it rules your courage. So Venus is like fighting with the Maya and your ascendant is where Venus becomes exalt. Now you have to see that this Saturn and Venus are going uh, together in the 12th house. 12th house is a place where Venus becomes very powerful. So you can see that there can be unexpected expenses or you might spend more to comfort yourself. So you will have to limit all these expenses because what will happen that you would want to expense but because of the Saturn's presence, you might not have resources. Your money will be consumed somewhere else and that will end up bringing frustration. This is where the Jupiter in the first house will guide you, will help you. Now Jupiter's reaction to this combination may be adverse. Like for example, you want to buy an iPhone. Let's take an example. But you know that there is a repair that has to happen at home. You are you were looking for that iPhone, but you have to use consume that money in the repairs. You are sad, sad about that. You are unhappy about that. But if Jupiter energies bring that realization so that that for that moment, you will be like, it's fine. At least the work or the task that needs that money is using that money, not that I'm using the money on some luxury. So this is how you will have to manage your energies. And this is not limited to finances. This will be true on all areas of your life. This is a great time to let go of any past memory, past emotion. And the more you try to chase your dream, the more further the dream will go away from you. Remember, Jupiterian energy and Jupiterian way of life, once it meets, with the Saturn and Venus, it will be good for you. Discard any unnecessary clothes or items. And if you can donate, if it can be donated, donate. Go minimalistic and clean your entire house. Clean your car. Clean your internal system also. Flush out the toxin. Detoxify yourself. Maybe go to a spa. Join a gym. Do yoga. Do something. Correct your diet. Because Venus and Saturn otherwise can remind you what you can lose. There will also be a sense of fear, especially in, in a troubled relationship, which can tell you that you may lose that relationship. You would desperately want to work to hold it, to restrict it, but you can't. So the best way is to be humble, to go with the flow, use that Jupiterian knowledge and wisdom to understand the process and trust the process. And you will see, that in exchange, you will gain back your identity. It's a kind of a transit that will reform your life, will take away something, but will give you much more.